Hello friends, uh, so we are looking at uh, the part 3 of the invasion of India by Alexander uh, this time and uh, we know past two episodes we had looked uh, at to as to how Alexander conquered uh, various tribes and kingdoms uh, across the Indus and then surrender of Ambi and the famous battle between Alexander and Porus at Jhelum. So we would look at uh, the events after Hedaspis and then we would also look at Alexander's retreat from India. We'll start with a quote and this is what Alexander used to say, upon the conduct of each determines the fate of all. So Alexander after he dies this uh, battle, he actually performed his customary sacrifices at the field of battle and then founded two cities at the battle site. So one city is named Bukapala which is named after his horse Busophilus. Uh, Busophilus uh, was a black horse which Alexander rode uh, when he was a kid. It was his favorite horse. And to honor his memories, uh, Alexander uh, buried him somewhere near Jhelum and founded this city uh, in his name. Uh, this Busophila grew into a great trading city because we know that uh, in the Peripolis of the Eritrean Sea, it is mentioned as a great uh, trading city in the first century BCE. Alexander also uh, founded a city called Nikaya. Uh, now Nikaya is named after the Greek goddess of victory. So in order to thank uh, the goddess, he uh, founded this city. Uh, Nikaya has not been found yet by the archaeologist. A uh, portion of Bukafela's yes, uh, it was somewhere near Jalalpur Sharif uh, in Pakistan, in Punjab's province. Uh, but Nikaya has not been found yet. So campaigns after Hydaspis, Alexander uh, went after to the Glosai tribe uh, who were situated between Jhelum and Chenab rivers. So 37 cities of Glosai actually surrendered to him. Uh, and Alexander then after conquering their region crossed the Chenab river. So near Chenab there was another junior porus or a relative of uh, uh, the porus uh, who Alexander defeated at Jhelum. He used to have his kingdom there and he was on hostile term with uh, the elder porus. Uh, so Alexander uh, and the troops of porus conquered his uh, territories and this uh, junior porus actually ran away uh, across the Bias and went towards Magda. We do not hear about him again. So campaigns against Kathas. Uh, now Katha were a tribe living uh, near Ravi river uh, with their capital at Sangal or Sialkot, modern Sialkot. And they were a very warlike tribe. They were like the Madras uh, in the, mentioned in the Mahabharata. So th these Kathas would not surrender to Alexander. Uh, uh, so they fought till the very very last. And their uh, losses as far as the Greek historians, they say that 17,000 uh, died and 70,000 were made captives. Alexander got into so much rage because of the losses suffered uh, by him by his soldiers that when he captured Sangal he actually destroy, destroyed it brick by brick and raised it to the ground. Uh, so after this Alexander uh, crossed uh, these rivers and then reached Bias river but that was the limit of his and, and he there he heard about the riches and military prowess of uh, Prasi and Gangradai tribe. Now friends, Prachi is a, a, Prasi is a, a Greek word but it has been taken from an Indian word or a, a Sanskrit word named Prachya. Prachya means Eastern ears. And we have Gangridae which means that people living on the banks of Indus river which was actually a part of uh, Nanda empire at that time. And the reports of their army strength filled the Greek soldiers with apprehension and they just rebelled against Alexander. They would not cross Bias. Uh, now friends, Q. Curtius Rufus mentions the strength of uh, uh, Nandas 
and their uh, their strength comprised of 200000 uh, infantry uh, 20000 cavalry and uh, 2004 horse chariots and the most formidable force of all uh, was 3000 war elephants now alexander's soldiers with somehow difficulty they beat porus who had 200 elephants but here you have 10 times more elephants who can be placed on a battlefield so they grew very very apprehensive on uh, what alexander wants to do and they just rebelled they were since 334 bce when alexander started his campaign they traveled from greece conquered egypt babylon syria judea persia proper afghanistan and uh, the the scythian tribes uh, living in turkmenistan and uzbekistan modern day they were literally tired and when they heard about this kind of strength of uh, military powers of nandas they rebelled so alexander in order to motivate his soldiers gave them a speech and then exhort in them the virtues of the brave and his plans what he wants to achieve and he also tried to tell them about the riches of the gangridae and prasi but the soldiers had have had enough so koinos uh, who was a general in alexander's army he became a representative of the these soldiers and he told alexander about the problems faced by uh, by the uh, soldiers so he's and this is what he says uh, as per aryan and I quote, only a few survive and these few possess not the same strength as before. While their spirits are depressed, you see yourself how many started with you and how many are left. So uh, there was this issue uh, of uh, logistics in that era. It would take months for reinforcement from Iran to arrive at uh, uh, to uh, Alexander. And these words actually expose the inherent difficulty in the way of alexander's ambitious uh, scheme manifesting uh, we would look in detail what problems alexander's faced in our final uh, episode uh, but uh, these uh, the words of coinus uh, he, he actually says that it was i mean it was impossible someone to build up an empire we could not command its supplies and the support of its own people because of the rebellions going on in alexander's back and there was problem with the logistics as well so and alexander was furious about uh, when coinus told him about these and he went back to his tent and he did not show himself uh, or to his troops for the next three days Finally, after the persuasion from his generals, Alexander came out of his tent and declared his intentions to return home. He crossed the Bias and constructed 12 pillars dedicated to the Olympian gods and returned towards Jhelum from where his, journey, where his return journey, journey could begin. Uh, friends, the exact spot where Alexander retreated has not been found. Uh, uh, Dr. V.A. Smith in Ancient History of India, Volume 1, states that uh, that exact spot is somewhere somewhere in, uh, beneath a river because the rivers uh, of the past 2,300 odd years, they have changed course dramatically. So the exact spot may be lying under water. Uh, so he may cross a portion of modern India perhaps near Amritsar or near Himachal Pradesh somewhere, stopped and then went back. But the exact spot has not been found yet. So when he reached Jhelum, uh, Porus actually had made arrangement for his return uh, journey and 800 boats of various sizes were constructed for his re return journey. And 
it was written journey through the lower indus region where lots of independent tribes and kingdoms were there and they would not allow alexander to just go like this so alexander that that thing gave alexander uh, more chances to increase his glory via conquest uh, and kingdoms like malavas shudrakas aglasoi they resided in these regions and they made sure that alexander will get a bloody nose uh, when he tried to conquer their areas so campaigns in the lower indus uh, first he came upon aglasoi tribe uh, which fought alexander to a man as you could see they had only 40000 infantry and 2000 cavalry and they could not do much they they were defeated in the battlefield and there is one incredible moment where in one of the cities uh, uh, when alexander troops conquered there were 20000 inhabitants and rather than surrender to alexander and live a life of slavery they all cast themselves into flame uh, in medieval times uh, we had johar where where Uh, particularly the the queens and their associates they would all uh jump into a funeral pyre and die uh, rather than dishonoring themselves so this is perhaps the first incident uh of the that term johar that term came in the medieval time but this thing is the first example in india where uh, inhabitants rather than uh rather than uh, live a life of slavery they all decided to die and that is this is exactly what happened so in november 326 bc alexander reached the stronghold of malavas who resided near multan uh, malavas were again a republican tribe and they had an alliance with the neighboring shudrakas uh, the exact lo- location of shudrakas have not been found yet so these shudrakas and malavas they had a combined strength of 90000 foot 10000 cavalry and 900 chariots and this kind of an army has been called shudraka malavi sena by panini who panini used to live about 200 years before but still mentions that their uh, malavas and shudrakas had this kind of uh, arrangement where anything uh, and if any foreign invader attacks uh, their territories they will combine their strength strength to oppose the uh, invaders so this is one of the photographs i have found from the internet this is side of a portion of a wall ancient wall of uh, modern day multan perhaps this was also constructed around the time of uh, when alexander invaded this area so uh, during the siege of because they had lots of cities not one particular city and alexander's troops had a lot of difficult time in conquering them because of the opposition offered so alexander was seriously wounded by an arrow which penetrated uh, penetrated his uh, right lung and he was saved from his by his bodyguard uh, named leonetus who protected him with the uh, sacred shield of troy now macedonians were so enraged by this injury to their leader that they massacred everyone when they conquered the city no one was spared and alexander was in such a bad state uh, big that uh, rumors started floating around that uh, he has died that led to lot of confusion among the greeks lost of a uh, lot of his soldiers started uh, going back home and because the uh, injury had penetrated his skull uh, his his lungs in fact and lung he- injuries would not heal properly alexander it is said that uh, in his last day alexander was troubled by this pain uh, in his lungs and probably that may have led uh, one of the reasons why he died so early but after 4 5 days alexander recovered and he accepted the submission of malavas and shudrakas uh, shudrakas unfortunately could not join their brethren because some say there was an issue with the leadership uh, or 
whatever they were slow and they were not able to join the uh, malavas in undertaking the defense of the country so when when malavas were conquered shudrakas also surrendered uh, themselves to alexander so next uh, we had this king called musikanas uh, or in sanskrit he is called mushika he actually uh, did not surrender to alexander so alexander when he reached his territories he came saying that oh, oh i am sorry uh, please take my kingdom please forgive me so alexander said okay take your kingdom be my ally and then he went forward he was he actually uh, invaded a king called king sambus uh, and sanskrit sambu and uh, king sambu was uh, ruling uh, savan modern day savan in sindh and uh, he sambus actually ran away again the greeks killed all the uh, males in his capital city and took the women and children as slaves so alexander uh, reached the sea uh, we are talking about his retreat now so he reached the sea in april 325 bce and was told that uh, musikanas whom he had forgiven had rebelled now there was an issue because uh, alexander's line of supply lines were coming from uh, musikanas's uh, territory but now musikanas has rebelled so what to do so alexander sent uh, one of his general python uh, with a part of his army musikanas was captured and crucified it is said that he did not want uh, to rebel against alexander but but uh, the brahman priests and other people of his uh, region they started making fun of him so he rebelled and he was crucified for that by the greeks his capital was put to torch and brahmans were hung from the trees not even brahmans there were lots of people who were hung from the trees and greek uh, sources say that about 80000 people died in the lower indus only this is only the indian casualties 80000 only in the lower indus so you can imagine what would have happened uh, somewhere in the punjab what was going on there at least uh, as per some estimates about more than 300000 people or indians died due to alexander's uh, invasion so alexander founded again a city there called alexandria this was his uh, uh, punch name he had uh, there are several alexandrias he had founded uh, the first one he founded was uh, is still going on it's alexandria a great port city in egypt but he uh, founded lots of alexandrias throughout his campaigns and in, in india Uh, apart from busafelas uh, busafela and nikaya he founded two or three more alexandrias and he also founded a city uh, as per plutarch plutarch says that uh, uh, alexander had a dog a pet dog named peritas and uh, peritas uh, after uh, alexander founded a city named after his dog that is what plutarch says so anyhow so this one uh, so he divided his uh, army into three parts uh, near modern day karachi so one part was le- led by nearchus uh, who was his uh, uh, navigator and he went towards babylon via the persian gulf uh, another part of the army was led by crateros alexander's most uh, trusted uh, general and he retreated via the bolan pass near quetta in modern day balochistan Uh, and the main body consisting of uh, uh, at least 60000 men uh, and women uh, they were led by alexander and uh, alexander uh, left india through the gadrosian desert it is says that uh, he lost 25% of his army while his retreat because of uh, hunger diseases and other things so so there was lot of uh, losses to alexander too and this is a good photograph uh, of the bolan pass this is the railways of bolan pass so this was one of the uh, three passes uh, or or three uh, ways uh, in ancient times where you could get into india so the first was of course the khyber pass the second was uh, through this bolan pass and the third one through the gadrosian uh, desert 
so these were the three main uh, paths if you want to come to india in ancient times these were the three uh, chief uh, passes or or ways in order to come to india and uh, till the british uh, and other european uh, powers came all the invaders of india came from either bolan pass or either uh, the khyber uh, and and so alexander uh, troops also went through this uh, particular pass alexander reached uh, uh, babylon uh, in about what mid uh, 325 bce and then he had great plans to conquer italy rome carthage he wanted to make a magnificent uh, pyramid uh, two times the size of uh, great pyramid at giza uh, to honor his father and then he wanted to come back to india to finish his job uh, but that uh, never happened and he died at a young age of 32 Uh, excesses in drinking injuries and lots of things combined to make alexander uh, dead at such a young age so friend this concludes uh, this concludes our uh, third part the penultimate part of uh, our discussion on alexander's uh, retreat and his subsequent con- conquest uh next part uh, would be the last part of this alexander's series and we would look at the problems faced by alexander uh while he was in india so i thank you all for all your support and cooperation uh for anything you want to ask you can ask me in the comment section uh just check my twitter account which is there in the description account uh, description box and 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 uh, i'll be back next week with uh, another uh, next week or maybe sunday i may be back on uh, sunday to conclude this uh, series on alexander so thank you so much please like and subscribe see you all